Hi everyone, and welcome to Gwen Collects. So as you can see, this is a bit of a different environment today. I am sitting at my desk, and today I will be attempting to do the current trend that I've been seeing all over my TikTok feed of uh, painting anime figures on panes of glass. So I'll put a few examples right here. But essentially, what people have been doing is drawing out their favorite anime characters on a piece of glass and then painting on the backside in like thick layers until they kind of have like a, a cell shaded image, like the original way they used to do anime. I kept seeing these really cool TikToks and people being very talented and making insanely good works of art of my favorite characters and I thought I really can't do this, I'm not very artistically inclined. But I did recently see a video by Sojo Videos and she did a super good job on Bokuto and she seemed like such a chill person that wasn't like a straight up artist, like she was just chill and like just so genuine that I felt like, you know what? Maybe I can give it a try. Maybe I can be an artist too. So I decided to pick up some supplies and give this a try. I thought worst case scenario, I can at least make a funny video out of my failed attempt at a anime painting and best case scenario, I end up with a very cool piece of art of my favorite character, Chika Fujiwara from Kaguya-sama. So this video isn't going to be a tutorial um, I don't even know what I'm doing, so I don't know why I would be telling you guys how to do it, but I thought it would still be fun for you to kind of see how I go about making this piece of art, hopefully art, that's yet to be determined, but uh, I thought it would be fun just for you guys to kind of see my process and for me to just do kind of a little chat. I always like to listen to chatty, chill videos in the background while I'm doing work or cleaning my room, so I thought that you guys may be interested in hearing a little bit more about my life and my favorite anime and just kind of figure collecting in general. Um, so I thought I could kind of chat a little bit while I do this. So I guess without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so to begin, I'll give you like a quick overview of my supplies here. So I picked up two eight by 10 like picture frames from Michaels, a set of paintbrushes because as I said, I don't do art and I did not have any paintbrushes. A few paints some paint pens. So I got the Sharpie paint pens. Where's the logo here? Sharpie paint pens. Uh, they're oil-based paint pens because apparently that works well for this. I don't really know. Um, I got the fine tip pen and the extra fine tip. Additionally, I picked up a few acrylic paints. I got white and black, green, blue, pink, and uh, red and yellow. I have a bubbly and I have my computer. All right, so I already went online and picked out my photo. So as I said earlier, I will be doing Chika Fujibara from Kaguya-sama. Um, this Chika looks a bit complicated. I'm not sure if this is a mistake. Uh, future Gwen will know if this is a mistake, but right now I think she looks super cute. Uh, this photo probably won't be like a super high res, but it's the only one I could find of this pose for Chika. So we're just gonna go with it and see how things how things go. All right, so I'm just going to be opening up uh, the picture in Illustrator. You can really use any kind of photo editing software that you want to do this. You don't even need photo editing software, to be honest. I just thought it'd be nice to kind of size out my photo since I have uh, eight by 10 inch pieces of glass here. All right, so I just resized it to the eight by eight and now I am going to print this off. All right, so I have my picture of Chica printed off, and I guess now we can get started. So here we have our piece of glass that I got my fingerprints all over. Oh, uh, one thing you can do that I didn't do because I didn't really care is if there's something on your character that's like written, you need to mirror the image because when you paint it on, it'll be like reversed. I didn't really think that mattered with Chica because her pose is kind of like, it doesn't matter if she's facing left or right. So I'm just gonna keep her like this and paint her like this. But if there is some kind of like text on the picture that you're doing, you need to mirror it because you'll be looking through the glass the opposite direction. I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna start by going in with the fine point pen. I don't actually know how thick it is. Okay, it's this thick. 
hopefully this will work. <laughs> I'm really nervous. Um, I did see in Sojo's video that you can use, I think, nail polish remover to get rid of these Sharpie pen paint pens. So I'll probably just do that. And she also said to like hover above it instead of like being at an angle. Otherwise, the like, thickness of the glass can affect the, the placement of your lines, which also makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm kind of nervous to do this, but I think it will be fun. So this is already harder than I expected. Uh, because I'm not very good at doing straight lines. <laughs> oh man. Okay, well, we'll just keep going. So I'm a little bit further along uh, with the outlining. I realized that my hands are not very steady, so <laughs> this is a bit more difficult than I expected. But we're sticking with it. We're gonna keep going. So from what I've found is that it's easiest to just really go for it. If you try to do like little strokes, you end up with like janky lines, like most of mine. So if you just give it a good like, you just hope that you can do it straight and you just go in one fell swoop, you get better results. I also think that I'll probably need to go over all of these black lines a second time, just to make sure everything's like totally opaque and not streaky. So I guess while I outline, I can talk a little bit about kind of how I got into anime. So I got into anime fairly recently actually, um, a bit earlier this year, I would say probably around March of this year. Um, my boyfriend was watching Attack on Titan and he was just finishing up season three and he was like, Glenn, you absolutely need to watch this show. And I was kind of like, eh, I don't know if I'm into it. We had tried watching One Punch Man together before and we couldn't really get into it. So I was kind of not really into watching Attack on Titan, but uh, he was watching the second half of season three. Anyone who's watched Attack on Titan, um, I won't spoil anything here, but essentially it was the like hypest parts of season three that he was on in the last few episodes. Um, so he kept asking me to watch it with him, asking me to watch it with him. So I was finally like, okay, I'll watch it. What's the worst that could happen here? And so I watched a couple of the episodes and then a couple more, and then we finished the season together. And I realized like, holy, this is amazing. This show is so good. I need to watch the whole thing. So I went home that day and I started watching all of Attack on Titan right from the beginning. And I finished season one in a day that night and started on season two. Um, my boyfriend started watching it with me because he had kind of forgotten what happened uh, since it had been a long time since he watched those seasons. So we were watching it together and we finally like got through season three and I was all caught up and I was like, this is amazing. This is so good. How did I, how did I not know this, this medium existed? <laughs> uh, so from there, I decided to start watching some other stuff. Um, I talked to my brother who I didn't really realize until then was uh, into anime. And he recommended I watch Death Note. So I started watching Death Note next and was so into it. I love Death Note. Um, I love all arcs of Death Note, even the, the second half. Um, but I was like super into it. I was like, wow, uh, Death Note is amazing as well. So we watched Death Note and I was like, okay, I need more. Um, I don't remember what the third anime I watched is. I think it was uh, actually Ava. I think I watched Evangelion next um, because everyone was like, oh, it's a classic, it's a classic. So I watched it and I was not a fan. I was like, what is this? <laughs> I didn't really get like the, the, the supposed depth of it, but it didn't perturb me. I was like, one anime isn't gonna like make or break this newfound addiction of mine. So yeah, I watched uh, Ava, thought it was okay. And then moved on to 
I don't even know what came next. Once I was done Ava, I kind of just went all in and just started watching like every single thing. I started with Netflix, watched a bunch on Netflix, and then I kept looking up like suggestions for different anime and they all ended up being on like Crunchyroll and Funimation. So I was like, hmm, these are not on Netflix. So I decided to invest in a Crunchyroll subscription first and started watching some anime there. I watched uh, Dr. Stone, which I loved as, a, as an engineer or a future engineer, I should say. I really enjoyed uh, Dr. Stone. I highly, highly recommend that anime. And then I moved on to just kind of whatever. Uh, I watched Fire Force. I watched quite a few things actually. And then I found Given in there somewhere <laughs> among all of the anime I watched. And Given was awesome. Um, I really like to see good LGBTQ plus representation in anime. There is quite a bit of uh, LGBTQ plus, but not all of it I would say is good. Um, I really don't like the kind of like sexual assault vibe a lot of animes give off. So whenever I find anime that has very good representation like Yuri on Ice or Given, um, that always excites me because it's good to know that <laughs> there are a few people out there that like to represent. Um, not straight people. Well, so now with anime, I'm about mm, 80 in. I've watched about 80 different anime, um, which by no means is a ton. But I would say that in the, what is it, few months that I've been into anime, six or eight months, that's quite a bit. All right, looks like we're getting close to done her hair. Um, I kind of did something dumb where I taped her here and here, so it's hard for me to like flip it and check. But if you aren't dumb and don't tape it in multiple places, you can go like this and just kind of check what it looks like. Honestly, okay, honestly, that doesn't look that bad. It kind of looks okay. <laughs> A second coat will definitely be necessary, but not bad, not bad. I'm just kind of jumping all around here. I'll start on like her like bow thingy, her collar and her hand next. But I think I'm getting a little bit more confident. It just takes some practice. If I had to give my favorite uh, anime right now, if I had to give like a, a quick list of my top like say five, I would say in no specific order, except for my first place. Um, my first place is definitely Samurai Champloo. I've watched it twice at this point already, and it is just such a wonderful anime. I love the vibes. I think the vibes are just so good, <laughs> just to begin with. Um, and then Fu is one of my absolute favorite characters in any anime. I love Jean and Mugen, but Fu is just so like, I don't know, she's just so awesome. And I love how she bosses around um, uh, Mugen and Jean all the time. It just makes me laugh and I just feel like she's such a, like a, an awesome, sweet, interesting female character. And I really appreciate when there are interesting, cool female characters in anime because often they are there for the uh, fan service so it's great to see some just like really fleshed out awesome female characters uh additionally i just love the story of samurai champloo it's kind of chill i really love like episodic anime i just kind of like the flow that it has more so than like anime that take forever to get through like a storyline um, I like when there's like an overarching story like in Samurai Champloo, but it's not the focus of every episode. Every episode kind of has its own unique kind of story and conclusion, which I really like in an anime. Uh, continuing on, um, one of my favorite anime is Haikyuu. I think I've talked about this before on my channel, but Haikyuu is just, I don't know. It's like my comfort anime. I think I've watched it probably Mm. three or four times at this point and honestly it never gets old. I've watched it subbed, I've watched it dubbed, 
Um, and I love them both. I honestly prefer the dub, I think, for uh, Haikyuu. Um, oh, and I didn't mention that. I've only watched Samurai Champloo dubbed, but the Samurai Champloo dub is so good. I don't know how the Japanese could be better than the English dub, and if it is, that's insane. But I am obsessed with the English dub for Samurai Champloo. Anyway, so yeah, I love Haikyuu. I'm a big uh, sports anime fan. I haven't watched a ton, but every sports anime I have watched, uh, which is like Free, Haikyuu, Run With The Wind, Yuri On Ice, um, off the top of my head, those are the ones I can think of, but I'm sure I've watched more. Uh, I've just really enjoyed them. I think what I like about sports anime that like other shonen doesn't have is that sports feel more real to me. I don't know, I used to be a competitive dancer when I was young. Um, so being able to see kind of the, uh, the, the real competitive spirit of these characters is something I really enjoy. Uh, another favorite of mine is, I already mentioned it, Fire Force. Uh, just the art style, everything about it I just really, really like. Uh, the characters, Shinra is awesome. Uh, I'm obsessed with Hibana, love her. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, another personal favorite of mine is March Comes In Like a Lion. So March Comes In Like a Lion, I actually watched fairly recently. Um, just because it, it kept getting recommended and I was like, you know what, let's see what this is all about. And wow, that anime truly moved me. I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I just found the characters so lovable and so relatable. Uh, and yeah, I just... That anime has a really special place in my heart. Um, I also really like the art style of it. It's very unique, which I like. Um, I do love an anime with like a distinct art style where if you see it, you immediately know. Like, oh yeah, I know what anime that's from. Good morning, everyone. It is day two and I will be doing some more work on little miss chica over here so i'll show you what i got done last night my camera died like midway through doing the outlining so i'll show you where i'm at right now and then we'll get on to the first round of painting also i apologize for my greasy appearance i just got up i'm ready to paint so let's get into it all right so this is where i'm at right now for chica she's looking pretty good i think um it's kind of hard with the light shining, but yeah, I think I did the outline pretty good. Uh, I went over it with paint last night, so I kind of did the outline with the paint pens and then went over it with paint and like toothpicks because I didn't have a brush that was um, fine enough to do it. And then I just kind of like used a paper clip <clears throat> and toothpicks to scratch off any of the like janky lines. Some of them are still a bit like, hmm, but you know what? We're going to go with it. I think it'll be okay. All right, I guess I'll set up the camera and we'll get on to painting. All right, I've got my coffee right here. Coffee may be a bad idea if I need steady hands, but it's fine. I'm just gonna enjoy it. Got my hair tie. And I am ready to paint. So I bought whatever the cheapest like brush set was at, um, <laughs> at Michael's. So these are definitely not the right brushes for this, but... <laughs> I think it'll work. This one's like fairly fine tipped. I don't know, hopefully you can see that, but we'll see. So what I've seen on YouTube and in like all the different tutorials is they usually start with like the eyes and the shading. So I guess that's what I'll start with. Uh, I have some nice birthday plates right here for mixing the colors. Um, I don't usually mix paint, so <laughs> wish me luck with this. I think I'll start with her like pink hair parts, like the dark pink. I think that's the best place to start. I bought paint, pink paint specifically for this because I thought, you know what, I could use red and white or I could just buy something that's already made for me. <laughs> so that is what I did. This paint does not have a little like tear thing though. So I'm gonna just struggle with it for a bit. So when my camera died yesterday, I was talking about um, my favorite anime and I thought I would just finish off. I think I mentioned doing a top five, so <laughs> I'll mention the last one um, that I was talking about before my camera died. 
So I love Violet Evergarden um, so much. <laughs> Anything by Kyoto Animation is pretty much just gold already, in my opinion. Uh, just by based on like the way it looks, because it just looks amazing all the time. But uh, <clears throat> Violet Evergarden just really hits different, you know. the The story is beautiful. the The animation is beautiful, and I again really like those anime that have kind of the episodic storylines with an overarching storyline. And to be honest, I felt like I was more invested in the like episodic ones than I was the overall storyline. Maybe that is a critique of the show. But I did really love the episodic storylines, especially the one with the girl and her mom. That one was uh, was just so beautiful and made me cry like a baby. Another honorable mention that I have is an anime called A Place Further Than the Universe. Uh, a Place Further Than the Universe is fantastic. It is such an amazing anime and I highly, highly, highly recommend it to anyone literally anyone. <laughs> uh, it's a moe anime, so it's got some cute little high school girls, <laughs> but the true value in that anime definitely comes from its amazing story. It's just very inspiring. Uh, it's about these four best friends, well, not really best friends to begin with, but four friends that come together with the common goal of going to Antarctica. And, uh, and I just feel like that anime is very inspiring. It makes you feel like you want to get out in the world and just do something unique, do something different with your life. And uh, I just, I really appreciated the inspiring message that it gives off. There's this one part, oh, I guess I shouldn't spoil it, um, but there's this one part that just really gets me every time. Maybe I'll put in a spoiler tag because I want to talk about it. But uh, there's this one part where when they get to Antarctica and they just start screaming in your face, and I just felt like that was such a, such an empowering moment in the show and really just made me super emotional. Uh, I just love that they made it. They told everyone that they were going and no one believed them. And then once they actually made it to Antarctica, they just were like in your face to all the people that doubted them. And I just really love that message of being like, you know what, I can do anything. And anybody who tells me I can't is wrong. So I highly recommend if you need some kind of like motivator in your life right now, um, I would highly recommend watching A Place Further Than the Universe because uh, it's wonderful and very inspiring. Okay, so what I've started doing is I've started using just like a toothpick to get these like really fine details. And I feel like it's a bit easier than using like a paintbrush unless you have a really fine paintbrush. But essentially I just like glob the paint onto the toothpick and then just kind of like lay it down and then drag it out. It's definitely not perfect by all means, but it seems to be working pretty well, actually. Better than I- <laughs> Spoke too soon. That might actually be fine. We're, we're doing some alternative shading. I'm not gonna follow the, the guide directly. I did see a few tutorials online where they like freehand drew the character and I was just like, wow, that is amazing. <laughs> definitely couldn't be me. I was hoping this video would be like super chatty, but I honestly have to focus so hard <laughs> to do this that makes it hard to talk. Regardless, um, <clears throat> I guess I can talk a little bit about how I got into figure collecting now. So I got into figure collecting in September of this year. I know, is that embarrassing? I don't know, the amount of figures I already have is quite a few. But I got into figure collecting in September because um, I was, I'm a student, but I work over the summer, obviously, and uh, I got a few scholarships this year and my tuition was paid for, so I decided to treat myself to the Chica um, Nendoroid that I had seen on the Crunchyroll store, because I guess I haven't talked about this yet, but I love Kaguya-sama, if you couldn't tell from my many videos talking about uh, the anime. I'm obsessed. I love Kaguya-sama. I love the show. Love is War is a great show. And obviously I love Chika. So I saw the Chika Nendo and I was like, oh baby, I think that, I think I gotta get that. But I kind of hummed and hawed about it because I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend that much money. Uh, which is kind of ironic looking at where I'm at now, but <laughs> I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend that much. 
So I kind of waited. And then once I got all my scholarships and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna treat myself. I worked hard, whatever. I went on the Crunchyroll store and the pre-orders for Chica were closed and I was so bummed. But then I looked and I saw a Shinra figure, a scale, which was obviously more expensive than the Chica, but uh, I saw it and I was like, ooh, that figure looks so nice. And I was watching season, was I watching? No, season two. Yeah, I was watching season two of Fire Force at that point because it ran through the summer and then into the fall. And I was just really enjoying the show. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to treat myself to Shinra. And then uh, this was like mid-September, um, but my birthday's in October. So I went home after I'd ordered Shinra and I told my parents, I was like, guys, I can't believe I did this, but I ordered an anime figure. And they're like, oh, cool, Gwen, whatever. <laughs> um, but then I was like, oh, but there's a matching one. And my parents were like, well, why don't we get that for you for your birthday? Because it seems like it would be cool to have the matching one. And I was like, um, okay. So they bought me Tamaki from the Funimation store. And I had read online that the Tamaki from the Funimation store came with the bonus parts. So I was pretty pumped about that. Um, and so they ordered me Tamaki. Well, I ordered it and they paid for it. <laughs> And then I waited and waited, and eventually they came. And the excitement when Shinra came in the mail was like way more than I expected. Like I was so pumped. I was so excited for this figure to come. And I was like, this is dangerous. Like this is addicting already. Like I was waiting. I was like watching the like USPS updates for like when they got into like Canada and stuff. And I was like, oh no, what have I done? But I really enjoyed getting the Shinra figure and I really enjoyed getting the Tamaki figure. So I started watching like YouTube videos and stuff. Uh, I really liked watching Danielle uh, Annie Bay on YouTube. She was awesome. She's so cool. Uh, and I was watching her channel and I was like, damn, like there's people my age that are doing this. Like I could be a collector if I really wanted to. And like throughout my childhood, my parents had always kind of really supported me with like anything collection related. So. I was always kind of into collecting things, but as I grew up, obviously the collecting slowed down. Um, but my interest never really like went away from collecting. Like I was still definitely interested in it. But once I started this kind of collection, it was kind of hard to slow down. Um, I picked up a few figures. I got um, the Pudding Rem and Ram for my birthday. And I bought the racing Miku after I found out about Ami Ami. I also purchased uh, Holo from Crunchyroll again. Before I kind of realized that Crunchyroll is a bit overpriced, um, at least for me living in Canada. The exchange rate is not great to the US and uh, their figures to begin with are just like, I think slightly overpriced compared to Japan. So I started ordering pretty much solely from Japan, but I do love my holo that I got. That holo is definitely my most expensive figure though, just cause I bought it from the States. So yeah, anyway, my addiction to figure collecting has definitely grown, uh, definitely not shrunk since, uh, since then. I've picked up quite a few um, figures as you've seen probably in a lot of my videos and I've just been really enjoying myself. It's definitely not a uh, inexpensive hobby because I uh, am interested in collecting scales, but it's definitely been a very enjoyable uh, hobby for me so far. And although I've gone a little crazy, I think things will be slowing down just a tad in the next few months uh, because I am not keen on spending all of my savings <laughs> on figures. All right, so I'm back now after I finished the shading on the hands and gone over the hair once. So I'll show you guys the progress so far. If I take this off as well as I come back. Okay, and then we'll put it around. And that's what it currently looks like from the front. So I think I really nailed the like hand shading. Her hair dried a bit interestingly. I don't know why it's dried like that, but that's all right. So now I'm going to move on to the eyes. 
Uh, good morning, everyone. We are now on day three of this art project. Uh, <laughs> I got quite a bit done last night after turning the camera off. So I'll show you guys what I've done and then we'll get into potentially the last day. I don't know. It might be like another two days before I, or like I'll finish this tomorrow, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right. So let me show you where I'm at right now. All right, so yesterday I just did a bunch of like the shading parts on it. I know it looks really weird from this side. So I did her bow, if it'll focus. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I did her bow. I did like the sh hand shading. I did the like white shirt shading parts. Uh, and then I did some work on her eyes as well yesterday. So now today I just have to do the light blue part. I also did her bow. Um, oh, and like some like white streaks that are kind of trash, but but it's fine, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, that's where I'm at right now with this. Um, got my coffee in a mug that I actually got in Tokyo Disney. A little Snow White mug, super cute. So yeah, I also have my Kool-Aid, <laughs> just kidding. It's the dirty water from my paintbrushes. And yeah, I guess, I guess let's get started. All right, so I thought while I was doing this, I would talk a little bit about one of my favorite anime topics. Um, my favorite anime intros and outros, or openings and endings. So I think the number one thing that really cemented my enjoyment of anime was definitely the, uh, the openings in a lot of the shows that I liked. I think the first anime opening that I really, really loved was uh, was the Attack on Titan opening for season three. I mean, it was the first anime opening that I had ever seen, and it was just so good. Um, little did I know there were many Attack on Titan openings that I would come to like even more than the second half of the third season. Uh, specifically, I actually, my favorite Attack on Titan opening is actually the second opening, so the like second half of the first season. Yeah, I'm- I just really like that opening. The song is so good and just like, I don't know, everything about that opening is just fantastic and I feel like people are really sleeping on that one. It seems to get overshadowed by, uh, Sasageo, which, don't get me wrong, is a great opening, but I don't know, there's just something about the, the second Attack on Titan opening. I don't even know what it's called, um, but it is my favorite. And then out of all of the animes I've watched, I think my my most recent favorite is uh, Chase, the second opening for part four of uh, JoJo's. Yeah, I'm obsessed with that opening. The song itself is just an absolute bop. And then I just love like the visuals in that opening. They're super cool. I especially like the part where the stands like turn into uh, Yukako and the Cinderella girl. I really like that part of the opening. A few of my other favorites are um, Hikari R from Haikyuu. I'm absolutely in love with that opening. It's just, the song is amazing. Burnout Syndrome's never misses with their openings, I swear. And then uh, just like the visuals and everything. And I love that season. It's probably one of my, well, I think season two is actually my favorite season of Haikyuu. But season three is a very close second. So that opening is just amazing and I actually prefer it to uh, fly high. Uh, I actually have a playlist on my phone <laughs> with just like tons and tons of anime openings. Um, ooh, a classic that I gotta mention is uh, the Samurai Champloo opening, Battle Cry. It's honestly so good. I love that opening so, so much. For anime endings, uh, the Samurai Champloo ending is one of my personal favorites. I just love that ending and I love like, I just feel like it's it's such a chill ending on a chill show. Just, it has it has great vibes. That's all I can say. Like literally anytime I talk about Samurai Champloo, I'm just like, yeah, the vibes, man, the vibes are just amazing. But I mean, it's true. Um, I also, Love Veil vale by K Kina Suda. And damn, that ending, wow. They really just killed it. I thought the endings on the second season of Hi or, um, I thought the endings on the second season of Fire Force were really weak. 
to be honest, especially like visual wise. I didn't like the like weird video game vibe they were going for, but the first season, oh, that first ending is so good. I've also recently been listening to a lot of lo-fi music, especially while I was working and like doing schoolwork and stuff. Um, I listen to a ton of lo-fi. And recently in my recommended, there was a YouTuber called Kijugo makes like lo-fi covers of, uh, of anime openings. And they are so good. The, uh, the Ava opening is probably my favorite that they've done, uh, but literally all of them are so good and are absolute bops. And I highly recommend you listen to them. <clears throat> all right, now we're back onto some easier pieces. So I'll resume my talking. Hopefully this video isn't just like me rambling and nobody caring. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I always like to like listen to just like people talking. Like I love listening to like podcasts and stuff. So I thought maybe people would be interested in just hearing me ramble about like anime and life. You know what I haven't talked about yet that might actually be, uh, be interesting to talk about <laughs> and relevant to this is uh, why Chika is best girl. So I know that the debate on Kaguya-sama often um, often comes to comes to uh, who is best girl, and I've seen many opinions on this topic, uh, even the opinion that Ishigami is best girl. And honestly, I can see it. I can see it. But I'm here to make the case that Chika Fujiwara is best girl, and nobody can change my mind. First of all, she has pink hair. Um, I don't know how you can argue with that, really. Pink hair is, uh, is really all you need to be a top tier waifu. Look at, like, Zero Two. Come on now. I actually haven't watched Darling in the Franks. I'm sure Zero Two is, uh, is great. But, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like if I watch it, I'm just gonna add another waifu to my pink hair list, and, uh, and her figures are way too expensive. <laughs> I cannot afford to be a fan of Zero Two. My boyfriend and I argue about this because he thinks that Kaguya is best girl. And uh, I hate to break it to him, but he's wrong. Um, Kaguya is very cute, don't get me wrong. But she pales in comparison to this beauty. First of all, Chika is just like a ball of energy. Like she's so cute and sweet. Like Kaguya's like cunning, which I can totally see the appeal in that. But come on, look at this pose. This is official merchandise that I took this picture from. Like, Kaguya would never be caught dead in a sick pose like this. I think the figure manufacturers agree with me too because there's like one Kaguya scale coming out from uh, Aniplex, which is really expensive, but I'm still considering buying. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and like a million Chikas. They even started with Bunny Chika, okay? If Kaguya was really best girl, wouldn't they start with Kaguya? I mean, she is the main character, so why'd they start with Chika? Answer me that, Kaguya fans. No hate though, let's be real. Kaguya is a fantastic character and I totally understand why people like her, <laughs> but I gotta, I gotta stick to my best girl. All right, so here's what it currently looks like. I know it looks really weird from the back, but I swear it looks good from the front. <laughs> I realized that I missed the white spots on her eyes. I didn't realize there were any. So I added those in quickly. Luckily, I realized it r right as I was doing the face. Um, so I was able to add them in, but yeah. I really laid that paint on thick, but I realized there's a little hole in her bang, so I gotta fix that. But she's looking good. Oh, I also forgot. Check out the fit today. We got best boy Zenitsu on the shirt. Very nice, I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, so now on to, I think I'm gonna do her like dress. So I'll do like the dark parts of her dress, I think, next. Then we'll do the white and then, yeah, we might be able to finish this today or like only have a little bit more to do tomorrow. So I'm going to work on that for a bit and check back in with you guys when once that is done. All right, hello everyone. I am back, it is now what, day four, I think, for this project. So I guess here I will show you what I've done so far and we can start to finish Chica up. All right, so this is where we're at. Chica's looking a little scary now. 
the uh, the eyes have been covered. As you can see, I laid on the paint really thick and it actually started to crack. Hopefully it's not noticeable from the front. I haven't actually checked it from the front yet. So the only part of this that hasn't been painted at all yet is uh, the lighter part of her dress here. But otherwise everything has at least one coat. All right, and this is how it currently looks. Oh, it looks so good. So I highly recommend holding it up to the light and you can see there's a lot of uh, holes in this. So today I'm gonna be doing a final coat over everything, especially like obviously the top area. But yeah, I'm gonna be doing a final coat over everything to make sure that there's no holes because there are a ton of holes. You just don't realize it until you hold it up to the window. <laughs> it looks great from here though. And here's the finished product. So I think for a first attempt, Chica turned out really, really good. There are a few flaws here and there, but overall, I'm really happy with the result. One thing I would recommend is while you have to lay the paint on thick, don't lay it on too thick or you'll end up with cracking. As you can see, I also did a matching Kaguya, applying some of the uh, skills I learned from doing Chica. I'm really happy with how these both turned out and I think they're gonna look really nice on my shelf together. If you're thinking about doing this project, I really recommend it. It was super fun and didn't take a super long time either. If I can do it, you can do it. So I guess that's all. Thanks for sticking around. If you made it all the way to the end of this very long, very chatty video, thank you. And I will see you all next time. Bye.